the Oppo K5, a new mid-range phone from Oppo. This thing is looking really good. Hands on with the Oppo K5, a really solid phone. The little brother to the Reno Ace, which was released at the same time. Oppo have included a ton of specs in this phone. Starts off with the Snapdragon 730G. This is the upgrade to the Snapdragon 730. It's an overclocked version, so you're gonna get slightly better performance. It's a quality chipset, not just with the CPU, but also the GPU, and it's very good when coming to image processing as well. Oppo have packed a quad camera setup in this one with a 64 megapixel main sensor. Maybe some of you will be possibly comparing this to the Redmi Note 8 Pro, uh, Realme phones. And yes, it is going to be very similar to those, but the difference is the processor. It's a very classic Oppo design, although on this one they've moved the Oppo logo to the right hand side, but I actually really like this emerald green color that they've put on the phone. USB-C, it keeps the headphone jack and you get a mono speaker at the bottom too. On the right hand side, you get the power button there and the 64 megapixel quad camera doesn't stick out too much from the back there, which is a good thing. Volume rockers on the left hand side with the SIM card tray. The OLED screen on this one is six and a half inches and it is a definite upgrade over the previous mid-range phones from Oppo. When I first picked up the phone, I actually thought it was a model and not a real phone because the screen had this very matte look. It reminded me a little bit of Samsung OLED panels. Viewing media, flicking through social media or looking at photos on this panel is a really good experience. We'll get onto the camera a little bit more in a second though. The notch at the top has been made smaller than previous versions. Even though it is a notch and not a pop-up, it means you get a slimmer phone and this notch really is so small it's almost irrelevant anyway. A small bezel at the bottom but nothing out of the ordinary. I would say it's slightly smaller than the Redmi Note 8 Pro but the Note 8 Pro is a slightly cheaper phone. Another great feature of this phone is they give you 30 watt fast charging on the 4000 milliamp hour battery. That is a very very solid spec and really is in line with a lot of flagship phones. But this phone is coming in at about 1800 RMB. That's the Chinese price. And for all the specs that you're getting in this, it's a really good price. You get the OLED display with a small notch, the 4000 milliamp hour battery, 30 watt fast charging, 64 megapixel quad camera. So let's move on to that camera. Now this is a very similar setup to what we've seen in the Redmi Note 8 Pro. You get the eight megapixel ultra wide. Then you have a dedicated macro camera and a depth sensor too, so you can take portrait shots. It goes from one, two to five times zoom automatically on the little button in the middle there. Then the ultra wide mode is on a button up the top. A good thing about this phone that we didn't get in Oppo phones in the start of the year is video recording on the ultra wide. You can do it on this one and I'm pleased about that. Photos are very typically what you get from Oppo phones which are very crisp sharp and with good colors in my opinion. That's helped by the very good quality 730G processor. I think for the price, Oppo have done a good job packing in a lot of tech that people want. The quad camera and the fast charging are fantastic at this price range. I'll be looking at the Reno Ace 2 very soon. Subscribe for more of the latest hands-on and first looks at all the latest phones. That's it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.